Market research, what should you be doing before you actually create and launch your very first course or digital product? That's what we're gonna be diving into in today's video. Hey, I'm Gemma Bonham Carter. I help online entrepreneurs create, launch, and scale online courses so that they can build their dream business. One thing that everybody needs to do before they craft their first course or group program or even digital offer is to do some level of market research. I'm not saying you need to go and spend the next two weeks doing this, but having an understanding of what's going on in your market is going to be really helpful to help you stand out in your marketplace, create something that is unique or different or has your own spin on it and is really going to be an incredible competing offer that's going to rise to the top of the market. So there's kind of two things that I want you to do when you're in this market research phase of developing your course. The first is to do market research on what else is out there in your market. So it's kind of like competing offers. And then the second piece of market research is to look at what's going on with your potential customers, your audience. So we're going to get into that in a second. I'm going to start by talking about those competing offers. So doing market research allows you to see what else is out there on your topic. I want you to go deep on the Google rabbit hole here and find other people who are doing something in the same niche or industry that you want to be doing. And I like to really have a spreadsheet open so that as I'm doing this, I can actually be popping in information into this spreadsheet so I can go back then and look at it kind of with that like big picture view. The good news is that it's actually a good thing when you do have competition in the marketplace, when there are other things out there, because what that's telling you is that people are buying these offers. People are interested in this topic. They are paying to learn more about it. And this is a good thing for you. This is something you should be exploring. And so when we talk about researching competing offers, Yes, it might be at other online courses or digital products. It could be go, hop onto Amazon and look at books on your topic, right? Kind of feel free to dive into the other ways in which people are selling information about this topic. It's also helpful at this point to get a sense of what other people are charging for their offers. This does not mean that you have to charge less than them. In fact, I don't necessarily recommend that you do at all, but it just gives you a sense of what's going on in the marketplace. It also allows you, this is in particular for courses, it allows you to see the frameworks of what people are teaching. Because generally, if you land on a sales page, they're going to tell you all the modules that you're going to get inside of their program. And ultimately, that's helping you understand how you can position your offer differently, right? Because you might start to see kind of the same, let's say you are someone, you're social media savvy, and you are going to, you want to do a course about Instagram. Well, you might start to notice that kind of everybody teaches the same stuff about Instagram. So now your wheels are turning and you're saying to yourself, well, how can I be doing something differently? Maybe it's that, you know, I have a different approach for really leveraging Instagram, or maybe it's that I'm going to cater to a very specific type of person who's using Instagram. So this could be um, real estate agents, for example, you're niching down that way. So doing this market research is going to start to help you uncover some of those like unique differentiating things that are going to allow you to stand out in the marketplace. Remember, the more courses and resources that are out there on your topic, the better. Don't get discouraged by this exercise. All right, the second element of market research that I want you to do is to tap into your people. And so the folks who are in your audience, who are going to be your ideal customers, What's going on with them? Ask them questions, get into conversations with them, really dig deep on trying to understand everything that they're struggling with, what they're confused about, where their pain points are, what their problems are, and how you can help solve them. So if you have your own audience already, the ways I love to do this is to tap into social media. So if I'm using Instagram, for example, but this would apply to Facebook or a Facebook group or LinkedIn or anywhere else that you are, if I'm on Instagram, I'm going to leverage polls inside of Instagram stories to start to 
get a sense asking this or that type of question so I can start to get a sense of what's going on with my audience around a given topic. I'll do a post about that topic and get people to comment below so I can start engaging with them there. And I'll also start to utilize those same tools to get people to land in my DMs so we can have a conversation in the DMs too so I can really understand what's going on with them. I also love surveys. So if you have any kind of email list or even if you have a list of people who are in your network that you could send this out to who might be like the ideal fit. Having a, a survey that you build out on Google Forms, Google Forms is free. I recommend making it like not that long. I wanna say like definitely less than 10 questions and make them a mix of open-ended and maybe some multiple choice. It is going to give you so much good insight as to what's going on with your audience. So you wanna be asking them really specific qu questions around you know, the, your topic so that you can create the best course or resources to help them with their struggles. If you wanna really take it one step further to encourage people to actually fill out that survey, you can incentivize it with some kind of giveaway. You have a giveaway, like everybody who fills out the survey gets entered to win a giveaway. That's always a really nice way to thank your audience for filling out the survey. All right, the last way that I love to engage my audience is to hop on one-on-one -on -one calls. If you can get on a Zoom session with someone in your audience and really understand what it is that they're working on and where they wanna go, what their goals are, you are going to get so much insight and their struggles or problems or questions are probably repeated tenfold throughout everyone else in your audience too. So you can be positioning these as like one-time coaching sessions or one-time strategy sessions or just a gifted session. And they can just be 20, maybe 30 minutes long. They don't have to be an hour. And it's win-win for both of you. So you come into it with some questions to really understand where they're at, but then they can come into it with their own questions and you can provide some coaching on that call. So although I know it can be scary to hop on one-to-one -one calls, really that's probably gonna give you some of the best insight into really deeply understanding your ideal audience. And now if you don't have an audience at all yet, you're really getting started in your business, my best advice would be to go and get yourself into groups, like say Facebook groups or follow people on Instagram or go, um, Go onto Google and find like forums and stuff where you can really understand the questions people are asking about your topic. This is going to help you better understand what the right path is going to be for you to start creating resources to help them. And honestly, my best piece of advice for just getting insight into whether or not your idea is going to fly is just to put offers out there. Nothing beats just putting something out there and watching what happens. I have put stuff out there and it has flopped. And other times I've put stuff out there and kind of thought, hey, I'm not sure if this is gonna go all that well. And like got a huge influx of response. So I know again, it can feel scary to just put our ideas out into the world, but that's really the best way that you're gonna test your idea. So whether whatever that looks like, it doesn't mean you have to have created the product. It doesn't mean you have to have the most epically long, beautiful, perfect sales page there ever was. Literally, you can put an idea out there in Instagram stories and watch what happens. Put an idea out there on your next email newsletter and watch what happens. I would rather you just get scrappy and do the thing, right? Make the offer, put it out there, done is better than perfect. And then we can work, you know, work from there if you get a huge amount of response and excitement, well, then we're going to put the product together and get it out into the world, right? So here's my homework for you. I'm going to encourage you to block off like a half day and just let yourself go down the rabbit hole with this one. Do all that market research, prep that survey, think about where you can really connect with people in your target ideal audience and, and get a sense of what's going on with them. And Putting in the time now to really understand your market, I promise you, is going to reap so much reward when it comes time to actually launching your offer. If you are ready to turn what you know into an online course and really get that course idea out into the world, I'm inviting you to my free masterclass. It's called Course Class. It's going to be like 60 minutes out of your day. You can snag your seat at the link below. And this is going to be transformational for you in terms of how you launch that first program. 
I'm, I'm sharing all kinds of tips and tricks in this one, including how you can sell your online, online course first and create it second, because that way we're really going to understand whether or not there is demand for our course in the marketplace. So if you want all the juicy details, head on over to that link and snag your seat. If you also need help figuring out your online course price, I know that can often leave people feeling super overwhelmed. I've put together a free online course pricing guide that takes you through the questions you need to ask yourself so that you can really value your course and price it at a spot that really feels good for you. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure to comment below. I wanna hear from you about how your market research is going. Is anything getting you stumped? Maybe there's like a surprising fact you stumble upon. Maybe you have follow-up questions. Definitely know in the comments below. Click that subscribe button so you never miss a video and I will see you in the next one.